stretch the calves first. We've got straight leg and bent knee. Two options, okay? Is that one going? Oh, good. Okay, so option one, or sorry, first one is going with a straight leg. And what I find really helps in this one is actually engaging your quad, all right? So like actively lock your leg and then push up into the wall, okay? So you should feel a nice stretch higher up behind the calf and kind of almost the back of the knee, all right? That's gonna go after your gastroc a bit more, gastroc knees. And we're gonna go for that stretch for 45 seconds per leg. Okay, once you are done that one, then you are going to bend your knee and then really drive that knee onto the big toe, okay? If you can get it over onto your pinky toe, then great, that causes knee ankle pain. Um, right onto the big toe, and then we're going to hold that for a little bit, and that should give you a lot more of a stretch right into the, kind of your Achilles and just above into your soleus, okay? So there is our calf stretch for today. You're looking for 30 to 45 seconds of each of those positions. From there, we're going to go into the peroneals. Peroneals are these guys on the outside of your calves, okay? Outside of calves, shins, whatever you want to call it. And we're gonna start up nice and high up in the knee, okay? Or towards the knee. And just putting enough pressure on there, you might kinda, you'll tend to activate your, your foot and press up like this, try not to, okay? And then we're just gonna give a nice little roll up and down the leg there. And then as you're going, you're, you're guaranteed to find a couple of these things, all right? I want you guys to really pay attention to these ones because they're ones that you should be doing fairly often once we kind of get into our six week running club program thing, okay? Um, staying on top of this stuff is, is part of staying healthy while we do our runs, all right? The, uh, the Brad Kane, the one and only, said in one of his uh, podcasts he did with, uh, it wasn't one of his, the podcast he did with Barrett is, running is one of those things that has a 100% injury rate, okay? And it's just, uh, where and when it happens. And we can definitely prolong our running life and make sure that we actually enjoy the six weeks by looking after our ankles and uh, ankles, calves, knees, hips, okay? So let's make sure we're standing on top of that. So once you're done rolling out one side, we'll go onto the other side and you can kind of get into some ankle pumps. You can kind of move your ankle around. If you're doing this on like the side of a box or something like that or the side of a bench, then you can do like kind of ankle circles Okay, as you're, you're doing it, and that's just going to be very similar to when you're doing like your forearm, you're kind of moving your wrist around so you can get some, some extra smashing of that tissue. Okay, uh, so from there, we're going to go into our lats. Move like a champ. I want to grab that guy over here. And for our lats, we're just going to do the old peekaboo stretch one hand up on, over the top, one hand under, and then press and then hang out there, okay? So we're looking for that nice long stretch down the side of your body, Ooh. okay? And then just gonna hang out there for 45 seconds to a minute on each side, okay? And now we're ready to progress, okay? Let's go into our handstand push-up progression. Kobe! Jack. Um, level one, sorry, back pedal. 10 minute EMOM. Level one is our pike push-up, okay? Feet on the box, bench, whatever you want, couch, volunteer, okay? Or on the floor, 
All right, coming down, make sure you can see your thumbs the entire way down, head to the floor, push back up, okay? You're going for six is a good goal. You can do less, you can do more, whichever, uh, wherever your strength is, okay? Level two is kipping handstand push-up. Okay, this level two is really if you, you kind of like have got your handstand push-up once or you can consistently do one. This kind of progression is for you. You're doing anywhere from one to four reps every minute, okay? Now, these should not be maxed out reps. You should not be failing, okay? So let's say you get yourself up on the wall and you're like, okay, and down and you're like, uh, and you just barely lock your arms up. That's it, it's all we want. We're looking for success, okay? We're not looking for you to PR here. There's 10 chances for you to get a rep. Let's get 10 reps, not 12 fails, all right? From there, level three, strict handstand push-up for one to two reps, okay? This is a very similar progression as the first one. If you are trying to get a strict handstand push-up and you know that these are very difficult for you, then this is a good place for you to start. One to two reps is not very many, but it will start to add up, okay? So you're looking to the same thing as normal. Make sure you can see those thumbs come down, tap, drive back up, okay? And then the last progression is for anyone that is much more proficient at our handstand push-ups, and we're doing max kipping in 15 seconds, okay? So if you are super proficient in those, then you're probably going to get somewhere around like 8 to 10. If maybe you're not super proficient, but you still have a good amount of volume, you're looking for anywhere from 5 to 8 kind of thing, okay? Now let's make sure that you do have control still when you're coming down. Don't just drop yourself in the top and compress the crap out of your neck, okay? Let's uh, make sure that those look good, all right? Uh, some key points, some things that you will, that will tend to help you with those uh, kipping ones is making sure that you are, <clears throat> that you're trying to stay nice and tight, okay? We don't want to have our legs way out to the sides. And I find that if you bring them too close in front of your body, that it pulls you off the wall, okay? So kind of have the knees out a little bit. And then it's a little bit easier to keep yourself driving straight up instead of drive, driving off the wall, okay? There it is, all right? Now, going into our AMRAP. 10 minutes. I have something in my eye. Um, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 20. If you get that far, you're amazing, okay? You're doing push-ups, normal old push-ups, no hand release, the ones that make you feel really, really good until they go away, okay? Normal push-up, jump lunges, total reps, and then dumbbell shoulder to overhead, all right? So let's look at these. For your normal push-up, pretty simple. Chest the floor, boom, boom, boom. Crank them out, okay? Then jump lunges, knee down. Okay, remember, total reps, four is two per side, six is three per side, okay? And then the movement that is new for us, who are at home, is just dumbbell shoulder to overhead, okay? So dumbbell comes up, overhead. Okay, each round you will switch, okay? You're not alternating overhead. I've seen this, this online. I find personally that's a bit of a death trap. Too much potential to drop the dumbbell in your head. So first round, do all four on one side. You can push press, push jerk, split jerk, whatever you want. Next round, six reps on the other side. Next round, eight reps on the other side, okay? So we're only alternating every round, not every rep. 10 minutes, go get it. See you Friday. Bye, guys. Have a good day.